Well, hey there, and welcome to Homer Hangout Live. How are you all doing? Hope your week has been good. It is CPI week this week. Super pumped to have Oleg back. We will introduce him on in just a moment. If you haven't done already, if you didn't know, we do have a Discord, so come and join us over there. And of course, if you want to test your games with Homer, there are links in the description to sign up for Homer Lab. And inside Homer Lab, you'll get our Market Watcher, you'll get our Ideas module, you'll get Homer Academy, of course. Tons of information in there for you. And of course, like I just said, if you want to go and chat with us throughout the week, pick up all the new games and all that kind of good stuff, head on over to the Discord. So we are going to be talking CPI today. And without further delay, um, I'm going to bring on Oleg. But what is up in the chat? Good to see you all here. Um, and let's bring on the man himself. Oleg, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, guys. I'm doing great. How about you, Kevin? How about you yeah, guys? Yeah, I am chat? very well, actually. Thank you. It is Friday. The sun is out. And we are here providing golden nuggets galore. Um, so, yeah, good to see everybody there. Mr. Cortex, Ali, Ali, move on, Sammy, Chris, Jilly, everybody, what is up? We have got a presentation from the master himself here, Olex. So we're going to jump into that real quick. But as always, if you have any questions today, do put them in the chat there. I can see your questions and we'll get to them uh, uh, at the right time, probably after the presentation. Thanks to everybody who submitted your videos this month. We're going to see how it goes because I really want to make sure that we give Oleg enough time today to ensure that we really dive deep into the creatives and what we have here on the presentation today. So um, get your questions in about that. And uh, yeah. I think, Oleg, well, I think we should just jump straight into things today and I'll be monitoring the questions as we go. But I'm going to hand it over to you and uh, I'm excited to, to, yeah. to see this one. Thank you, Kevin. I think uh, everybody wants to get it done and enjoy the sun on Friday. So let me be quick, but at the same time, informative for you guys. So we're going to talk actually about fake creatives. I think, uh, I mean, everybody knows what's fake creatives, but I'll again remind you guys and then show a couple of examples of how we use it, uh, when we use it and uh, how it can help actually in scaling your game on the, on the key study of the game we launched. So what's actually fake creatives? What exactly do I mean? Is uh, something that's actually very different from a gameplay. Uh, and I think you, every one of you, so a game uh, had the interstitial in another game, and I was like, well, this looks cool. Uh, I want to play it. But then downloading the game, uh, you were a bit disappointed. Or maybe not. Anyways, uh, here's actually an interesting example of Delivery 3D by, uh, by our friends from Voodoo. They, as you see on the left side, they scaled on a, on a creative done in realism, actually, with a mix of first person and third person view, where you kind of uh, want to, um, you're trying to, to, to turn left. And uh, with the hesitation, a scenario that works super well. And actually, on the right side, uh, there is a cartoonish, uh, cartoonish uh, gameplay from the actual game, Delivery 3D. Hope you guys played it. Uh, and uh, you see, like, there is a big, big, big difference in the between the ad and the actual gameplay. And uh, so, when do we want to use uh, creatives like that? Uh, to, to see such a big, big difference in between the two is here. I would say we can divide between when uh, developers would want to to try himself to 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 promote the game to market the game with uh, with something which is not the actual gameplay. Uh, it's uh, mainly I mean everybody is doing that when uh, you don't have the CPI. You have a very very strong in game metrics and uh, you are completely blocked by the CPI and uh, uh, the publishing manager or or whoever you contact with is saying we won't be able to to do something with this game because of the CPI, and uh, usually usually you need to to have a strong idea how this can work uh, exactly in my game and why it, it would work. For instance, there is um, one approach is to introduce something trend based, and uh, here like immediate example uh, josh uh, before was speaking about the trend on realism which is happen happening right now in hyper casual this is a bit the the case here they they took uh, completely realistic assets and uh, uh, put it uh, on top of the actual gameplay 
And this is what you can do. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, the Squid Games trend that happened uh, a year ago where, where developers they actually just dressed the existing game into something completely trend-based and, uh, and showed it. Or if uh, if you know that there is a mechanics which is which might be close or not at all in your game to to uh, and you know that this uh, this mechanics has a low CPA, so I would say that uh, there is a game uh, turn left that would do scale just before actually, and uh, this was exactly the scenario of the game where uh, of the creative they used to deliver it 3D where the the person is in the right um, uh, side of the road and there are two uh, lines of cars going uh, towards him and he's trying to turn left it's actually exactly the scenario they replicated in delivery 3d and they had a strong uh, proof that this might work thanks to this game uh, so this is mainly i would say the two um, the two opportunities for you to do it because otherwise if you just try to fake uh, do all of your ideas uh, that might have low CPI and trying to more creatives, you, I mean, you could spend uh, much more time than you spend on actually developing the game. And uh, on the publisher side, we use it a lot, actually, even in Homer, in uh, hyper casual or hybrid casual games. And uh, for us, it's uh, either after the launch, so when we tested, uh, when we launched the game, it's a big title making money and we want to, to refresh the videos or reach the audience that was not reached before. So something like completely, um, completely uh, not related to the actual gameplay, what we tested before. Uh, so this is post launch when we do that. Before launch, I would say we do that when we, uh, when we almost give up, I would say. So when we try to, when we tried everything with the core gameplay, core mechanics, all the iterations, all the skins, and we see it's not working, CPI is not there, and we, we still need to close that gap to 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 have LTV higher than CPA, and uh, we need to do it. So then, uh, you know, gather opinions from everybody, ideas for everybody, and uh, and let's test it. But it's also, I mean, a decision because uh, almost an investment decisions because we need uh, more resources to implement it. If uh, doing the iterations or doing the um, recordings, uh, you it's enough to have a motion designer just doing stuff here. Uh, in in uh, post production, uh, when you want to try something which is not your actual gameplay, you clearly need a developer for that, uh, which we do. But still, uh, it's uh, you know we can't do that for every game, so it's actually like almost an investment decision when to use fake creatives. And uh, I'm gonna show you actually how we did it with Tape Thrower, uh, which is one of the games we published a few years ago, and uh, this was actually done by the developer itself himself not by by our team but uh so might give you an idea how you can do it on your site so on the left side you see the original gameplay of the of the game of the thrower and uh so it's actually like first person view shooter you move from a platform from platform and you throw tape uh, on the enemies to to beat them and uh it already like immediately had quite interesting CPI from the first test, 27 cents. And uh, I mean, for me, it's coming a bit from uh, from innovation in the mechanic and also the effect when the enemies are thrown towards the wall. It was quite, uh, I mean, it was the key uh, in idea for me when, uh, when I pitched it to the developer and uh, well executed. And it was 27 cents actually uh, from the first test. And then we tried to to but well, when we worked on, on the game itself trying to lower uh, trying to reach the in-game metrics we need to launch uh, the the cpi started to rise and it reached maybe like a, in a few months 30 35 cents which was uh, a bit high for them back in the days like when we were purely ad based um when we had purely ad based monetization in the game it's not a hybrid context clearly uh even 27 i mean for us we we wanted to have to, to see something lower uh for this game and uh, that's why we actually sit with the devs and try to to ideate what uh, what can uh what can we do with that gameplay uh, and uh, we had this idea which is uh honestly very provocative uh, is to put the cross uh behind the um, behind the red enemy and uh, you know having him jumping a bit provoking and have these multiple layers of tape thrown at the enemy 
I mean, you see the, actually, I mean, the idea of um, throwing a lot of tapes on one enemy and pinning him to the wall is also in the core of how we came the idea, how we started to do the game based on these uh, videos. I'm sure everybody uh, saw them. And then Putin and Cross, it was a big provocative decision, uh, which uh, I kind of, I mean, usually that's what hyper casual audience uh, click on. So we, we kind of knew that we are doing something uh, uh something to something provocative and uh even though we didn't have many we didn't have any problems with the networks or something we knew we'd do something provocative and we and it worked and we reached uh 16 cent cpi on uh, on facebook on the immediate uh, on the test and uh, actually i mean it was uh it's a big big, big drop uh, you're going from uh uh, uh well the creative was like 35 cents our main one and here we went to 16 so we almost reduced cpi by twice and uh, you can imagine like the effect it uh, had on margin so after after that we went super fast with the game uh thanks to it but uh but the problem started as well after the pr the problems which are i mean we have one creative and we have to stay with this creative we have to stick with this creative and it was impossible to beat it like it was impossible to find something lower than that. If uh, the whole concept of uh, iterating on creative is that you test your core mechanics and you, you find that it's working, it reached some, uh, some interesting CPI. And then uh, with the creative team of publisher, you iterate further on it and you try the, the, the scenario or the skin or the situation which works the best in your core gameplay. Here, we can't do that anymore because we did something fake, right? Something which is not uh, in your core gameplay and we, we can't recreate it and we can't uh, beat it, basically. Unless we find something even more provocative, even more fake that would uh, uh, yield us even lower CPI. But we, we couldn't, so we stayed with one creative uh, for the whole launch and uh, the game was launched uh, uh, and scaled on this creative uh, mainly. No, not mainly, uh, basically, uh, on this creative. So that leaves us with the possibility to iterate only uh, on top of it, adding banners, uh, adding uh, some phrases, maybe voiceovers, but we, um, we can't beat it. So that's a big caveat when you use uh, fake creatives. can have huge impact and let you launch the game, but, uh, but there is uh, this caveat. And I'm um, going to show you, like, it's widely used on a hyper casual market and a good example of the game uh, that uh, that i found is actually a flexerin from um, from say games which is also they used a very similar approach i would say that they found something uh, that is trendy on the on the social medias which is rubber band challenge all this stuff where you put a lot of uh, strings on the um, on the object and uh, you do it until you break it and i think the watermelon is uh, one of the most uh, well-known and um, I mean those who played the game you know that uh, it's not actually the gameplay I mean the toy is the same that they use string but uh, the actual gameplay is actually in uh, un unwrapping stuff and um, which is uh, which you see on this on the second creative after you break the the milk so here it was a bit used a bit more as an intro but um but i mean it's um it's kind of, kind of completely fake so we go from uh, one thing you have marketability and another thing you have uh inside your game and um the big the only big question here is uh is the impact on the game metrics uh, we i mean there might be for sure there might be some uh, some big part of people who downloaded the game to to see the rubber band challenge but instead they they have to undo the puzzle but uh, there are ways to beat it for instance in the flexerin it's actually integrated as a as a bonus level or as some levels you can uh, actually break the the bottom band which makes it a bit less fake i would say uh, and uh, it's not always uh, bringing you the results you want the fake creatures i'm gonna show you the cases where we thought it would be a big um, uh, big success because it seemed like a good idea. Uh, it seemed like something that's trendy on the market, but it didn't work. And I'm going to bit give you my thoughts uh, why we thought it's a good idea. Uh, so you can see that every time you you have a game and you have a very good idea, okay, I have this uh, 
idea of a creative is going to bring me 10 cents. It's uh, because I saw that. It's not uh, always the case. So here we, um, we have merge master on the left side. Uh, where we, um, with, I mean, uh, which is a puzzle game, uh, was very successful for us. And we keep working on it and we kept trying concepts. We, we wanted to try something uh, lower than we had. And I mean, usually the runner is the, um, the genre in which you can reach the lower CPI. And that's why we, on the second creative, uh, especially the evolution runner, I think everybody saw, I mean, there were many evolution runners actually submitted to us on the CPI show. So we thought, uh, let's put a uh, runner gameplay into, um, to, sorry, let's test runner gameplay on, uh, on our models of dinosaurs. That's what we did. Uh, and, uh, it didn't work. I mean, uh, the CPI was much higher and, uh, the, um, LTV of people who installed the game based on it, uh, was much lower than, uh, than the usual very master creatives, a bit, same approach on the left side, uh, we wanted to, to show you know the pressure which usually works well on the creative when somebody is something is pressuring you to to perform the right action and then you fail usually people uh it brings it uh, it brings emotions and uh people are uh, people want to install a um, game that brings you emotions and on the right side i mean uh there was a big trend uh, dinosaurs uh back in the days so if you six, uh, 10 months ago. And that's why we put a huge, um, huge amount of them in uh, zombie defense, which is also something we know, uh, you know, the, the bigger the crowd, the, the lower the CPI used to be. And, uh, we thought that, okay, combining it with dino, using it in zombie defense, amazing idea. Let's try, uh, was tested and, uh, didn't, uh, didn't perform same, same approach. Uh, Something we tried on Fight for America is uh, a maze gameplay, which is, um, you know, the, the spiral, uh, the, the spiral level, the, which is something very, very, very common for tower defenses when the enemies are uh, running on you as on a spiral. And so you're building towers to try and protect them. I, I think all of you, you saw the creative like, like that from uh, casual games. So we thought it would be a good idea to test it on our tower defense again uh, didn't perform and uh, same uh, the the globe level so putting the um, the us actually on the globe the idea was that you uh, i mean even to to make the concept stronger like you know if the the concept fight for america is uh, fighting uh, uh, from your state and conquer state by state we thought we would give even more con context even more um even more like desire users to to play it if they think it's uh, on the globe and they would uh, conquer the whole planet actually and then maybe go to another planet something that was worth trying but uh, didn't work again so usually as, as you see there are many ideas that uh, seem like a good one but there are only a few that that works uh, like like it did in tip thrower and that's why it's um, difficult to predict before uh, but it might be worth trying. We'll discuss it as well. To to conclude, uh, is uh, you can really really reach a big um, bin uh, with the fake creatives, and that's why you see uh, so many casual games, uh, so many mid core games that they usually using fake creatives because it's lower, it's uh, easier for them to cheaper for them to acquire user based on these fake creatives rather than on the actual gameplay, and. Uh, Usually, when you are um, when you have your winning creative, uh, you can lower down the CPI of this winning creative by some iterations. You know, by adding banners, by by changing colors, maybe by uh, zooming in, all that stuff that we usually talk with you about. Uh, uh, this can lower your CPI by 10, 15 percent, I would say. But uh, changing colors on your winning creative, it wouldn't reduce your CPI uh, to X. And this is something that, uh, that happened exactly on tape throwers. So sometimes it's uh, amazing way to, to find extremely low CPI, but, uh, but there are many cons is that, uh, first of all, for us afterwards, it's, uh, uh, sometimes impossible to beat like, uh, like it was with, with the tape thrower and, uh, you, it's difficult to really select what could be the right idea. Oh, sorry. And uh, I would say, since it's very difficult for us to beat, I we usually don't ask 
and don't want developers to do something like that on the first, second, third test, because uh, afterwards, like for our team and for, to to lower it further down is uh, is difficult. And that's why um, we only use it on a, on a CPI test basis. So before we launch the game, uh, if we can, if we don't have any other way to lower the CPI, and if we have like a really strong idea with the devs, like uh, like we had that, and uh, many things could seem like a good idea, as as we saw with the with the previous examples, and uh, difficult to select, select the right one. You might do a bet. I mean, you should do a do bet sometimes because uh, that's how it pays off. That's how you get the the biggest uh, profit, the biggest uh, margin is when when you do a right bet, but it. Um, it requires a lot of resources, so uh, it's very important to consider a few things. Why do I think it would work for my game? And uh, best to to speak with somebody, to to discuss with the with your publishing manager, or maybe with the with your uh, friends, uh, game developers. Maybe they have an example of uh, something that worked for their game that you might reuse in your game, uh, which is slightly different, but uh, you have a certain element that can. Let's sit on my side. Back to you, Kevin. Nice one. Thank you, sir. Very cool indeed. I was just, um, there's so many bits I want to pick up on there, and there's a few questions coming in which we'll get to in a moment. But honestly, I think most of all, I seen the Fight for America ones, and especially the Dino one, which looked like a home run to me on a CPI video. Um, I think it really, and without going like, op on homer here i think it really does go to show the power that homer brings and our creative department of all the work that goes in to testing these ideas to try and find the right one that, that just has that angle for whatever reason uh, hits the market and reduces the cpi but i think it's really great the fact that you you showed us exactly what for the developers side of thing to do and to think about and also how on the publishing side, we approach it as well. So I thought that was really great. And thanks for, for doing that. Some really great examples. And like I said, but I'm I really shocked some, about that. Sorry, go on, please. I think at some point, uh, depending on the game, but uh, you reach on Happy Casual, I think you reach LTV ceiling. Uh, you know that uh, you add stuff and it doesn't have any effect on LTV. So here there is uh, the only way to, to increase the profit is by lowering the CPA. That's why we like you know invest a lot because we know that uh, certain concepts or certain uh, games uh, they they have LTV seal like Runner for instance like uh, very difficult to reach LTV on one dollar right but uh, you, you can uh, do a lot of things to on our side to reduce the CPI to CPI to to minimum. That's yeah, exactly, and I think it's important to just to clarify in case anyone's missed any of this. This is not. Like when you're testing your prototypes and stuff, sure, and like you said, we always talk about changing the angles of the camera and trying to make it kind of interesting. We're still really looking for the metrics of the game because a, a fake video going to a game that's no good is not going to, it, it needs to be, it goes hand in hand with it. And the, fakes, the fake side of it here uh, was really to concentrate on the, on the marketing angle and stuff. So we're still looking for the really, solid KPIs of your prototypes in case you just want to do a pull the pin advert and give us some random runner game. It's just not going to work like that. So this is more of like an in-depth type look at the look at the whole process. Um, I'm going to get to the questions real quick. Uh, I'm going to start off with Rox, who's got a couple here. Um, what would happen if you didn't implement fake create? What would happen if you didn't implement fake creative as a bonus level in a game? Will retention be reduced much? Not it's, quite. Uh, I understood the question. I, okay. So uh, it's, a, it's a bit difficult sometimes to track because there are not every, uh, you can't track the LTV. Not every network allows you to see the LTV of user who installed the game from a specific creative. Some, some allow, like for instance, Google Ads, you can check, but uh, some no. And uh, it's actually a big question whether fake creatives, they, uh, 
they influence the retention and they influence the the gameplay i would say they they do actually uh don't have a number to give you by by how much but they definitely do because the people they um, they uh, install the game to see what they what they see on creatures so usually we try to do tricks like yeah adding a uh bonus level uh, for v with this creative and usually they work very well because this uh like um, cross from tape thrower we implemented it as a bonus level and many people uh wanted to to see to play what they saw on ads so we had a very very good conversion to this rv so i would say usually it's better to to implement because not only it will kind of counter a bit your your um, the impact of a creatives but also will give you sm small uplift ltv and uh, though what you risk is that people are uh, deleting your game immediately you know they uh, installed and then uh, two levels okay it's not at all what i want delete this uh, might happen as well but usually uh, given the power that uh, it can unlock you it's uh, m a bit more uh, insignificant but then the pace depends on the case of course yeah i mean I, I was just trying to i was trying to reword that in my head just before you i mean i knew you understood it. i was just what i was trying to um well, I was going to try and refocus the question. I think that's a really good idea. Is that you're right? What will the churn be? What's the what's the sort of? Do you feel like you've been swizzed where you've downloaded a game and you the game you're playing has got nothing like it? So I think that obviously you are going to lose some players with that, and they're going to feel cheated out of what they've uh, like the false promise. But I I really like the idea of adding it as a bonus game. I think that's a uh, or bonus level, I should say. It's a really good idea to tie it all in, as Olek said then. So, yeah, thanks for that, Olek. Nice one. Um, Banneker, slightly off topic, but we are on the CPI show, and uh, he's kind of answered his own question here, but um, what is a good CPI if the other KPIs in the game are good? I know it depends, but an average CPI. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's, a, it's such a difficult question because right now you know the the paradigm bit shift into more hybrid casual. So now I'm uh, uh, you know the, my first idea was like yeah it doesn't matter too much if you have a TV of two dollars uh, we're gonna manage it to work. But if we talk purely hyper casual we still look uh, below thirty cents I would say for for a runner game or for a runner with a low LTV potential. But uh, now we really first of all learned how to scale games with uh, with higher CPI. Uh, which was uh, Hall and Phil, for instance, a bit higher CPI and data call, but much better in game metrics. So we uh, learned how to do it. And secondly, you have amazing uh, opportunities with hybrid casual, where CPI is a bit less important. But uh, if, if to answer how in hybrid casual, it's still at 30 cents. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I would say, well, you know, think about, you want to be around about 60 I would say, uh, as a bet, if you got to pick a number, try and you you were doing all right if you're looking around sixty cents. I would say, um, Rox is saying my journey was that I've started testing my game with fake creatives, got not bad CPI, and then reworked my game to be like on the best worked create. Oh, I see. So you basically you've turned your game into the best worked creative, which is pretty smart, right? I think that's kind of good, Rox. So I know you've got something here. Is it true that is is it true that it's much harder to record those creatives? Basically, a new game for each fake creative. Yeah, I think it's a statement, not a, not a question. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, Jesus, yeah, it's very true. clear slides and great presentation, Olek. Love this Friday show. Anyone else hit that like button yet? Well, there we go. I, I've got to agree with Julie. <laughs> Have you hit that like button yet? If you haven't, do give us a thumbs up uh, and vote for the show. And that's how we know that you guys are liking it. Uh, thanks for that, Jilly. Uh Do realistic graphics work better than cute cartoony aesthetics? The current trend. Well, I'm just going to jump in and just say you should go and check out our Art Style Matrix video um, by George, our ideation expert here. We go through that. We've got a whole presentation for you on the graphics that are trending right now. So you can check that inside the Academy uh, in the ideation section or on the YouTube channel here. So... Go and click that after you finish the stream today, and that answers all your questions. So, Raya Iman says, which one is better, detailed 3D graphics or low poly graphics in tower defense? Okay. Well, I think the same applies, but I'm going to let Olek speak because I know he's busting too here. 
But low poly, I'm just thinking uh, out loud. Low poly 3D graphics tower defense. I think uh, it might look a bit too casual. Uh, and uh, you no, know, tower defense is usually a genre with very high CPI. So if you do something low poly, might I mean unless you have a strong idea, a strong innovation in your concept. If you just ask about the the graphics, I think it might look close like to the mid core games, uh, which have. Like, uh, you know, Tower Defense is one of the most uh, EIP bringing genre. So consequently, the, uh, the users they buy are very, very expensive. And then uh, you would like kind of target the same users so automatically rising your CPI. Uh, unless you have something extremely strong in ideation, like for instance, in fight the, the, the American map. And uh, detailed 3D, I think, could be a bit lower because uh, less saturated. I mean, there are less games uh, that I can think of, which in Tower Defense, which use that graphics. But then uh, I would say that if you want to do Tower Defense, uh, graphics should be like not the last, but not the first thing you think of. Because I say that I would say that uh, without strong innovation in a core loop or in progression or in whatever, just with the graphics, uh, Going to be difficult to to publish a game uh, like that. Yeah, like you said, there's there's a ton of really great tower defense games. They've been around since the App Store began. So you really want to yeah. be looking to innovate on the. I'm just repeating what Alex just said at this point. Yeah, try and don't worry too much about that. Just make sure you've got something unique and fresh twist on that genre, and you'll have um, way better success concentrating on that part of it i'd say um rock said one conclusion i've made after my first game tested is that i think about creators on the stage of concept creation and make a game like that so yeah we've often said and it's slightly different now as we move into the hybrid casual era but you know when you're doing hyper casual prototypes you'll you'll think about making you're making a video really rather than the game itself or think about what the video is going to be like as you're thinking about the game. It's as simple as that. Think about it as a movie trailer and you kind of want to put your first best foot forward doing that, I'd say. Uh, it was a statement, Rox. Thanks for that. Yeah, I, I read these out like a potato every time I come on here. So um, keep your questions coming in. Uh, let's uh, squeeze Olek for all his knowledge while we're here. Um, imagine you've got a sniper game, says Burak, that has a CPI that has the CPI plus 1,000 gameplay time, but the retention is 30%, what would you do? Well, it depends when that 30% is. Um, I don't, do, you, do you understand that particularly? I mean, that they all look pretty good. I think he missed the comma or CPI. I mean, uh, has the CPI. I don't know how I much, see. but probably yeah, low. Got it. <laughs> Plus one thousand uh, gameplay time. I mean, uh, but the retention is thirty percent. So I don't know how well developed is your game. What you have in it. I mean, it sounds like okay starting metrics, especially it has the CPI. I think it's something we would work with. Uh, but uh, I mean, if you did uh, one thousand iterations, you you have a strong meta system in it and everything, and uh, then you have this metric, then I would say it's a bit low, especially the playtime. Right now, for a snappy game, would go a bit higher. But uh, if it's uh, your first, second test, uh, yeah, you can work with it. So, what would you? What sort of playtime would get you excited to see this game in Home Lab being tested with us? What's that? The thousand. If you're saying if it's to like the first run, um, and you've got decent retention there, which is decent start one, and the CPI is uh, on point, what's the sort of playtime would you would you like to see on a sniper type game? Uh, on a sniper, a bit. Closer to 2000, ideally, I mean, to, uh, I, but I'm speaking about like publishing KPIs, of course. So it's uh, like, you know, a soft launch, soft, still for some launch, more like 1.5 to to make sure, you know, people, uh, they, they consume the content and you would be able to to introduce the, the meta in it. Because for, for hybrid casual, actually, the play time matters also a lot because that's, uh, you know, if people don't spend time in your game, they won't, they won't spend time... Uh, looking at all the small features, optimizing the, the you know, the upgrading something, going there. If they only spend 1,000 seconds on it, uh, they won't do, they won't have time basically to explore everything you add. So they should like the core gameplay itself. And then on top of it, ah, nice, you can upgrade your, your, your sniper rifle. Oh, here I can, 
uh, I don't know, choose the best location for me, something, uh, you know, I'd build it on top of your core. Yeah, I think that's a really solid point as well, because if they're not if they're not spending yeah. long enough, the likelihood of them being invested to purchase something from the shop, be it additional power ups or anything that you've got into your game, you want to be you you want them to be totally in love with your game. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, and that's reflected in the game time. So I think for the most part, um, especially for a sniper type game, that play time needs to go up. But if that if you t- all right, let's put it this way: if Burak was testing this on. Uh, on Homer Labs now, and we got those first numbers. Um, as, assuming there was something relatively unique about that, is that something that then would go for an iteration? Do you think, Oleg? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember what were the metrics of the game that we are launching. It's called Wild West Cowboy. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't remember the metrics we had on the first tests. Uh, but uh, you can play and check it, and it's uh, it's not a sniper game, but it's a bit close. You know, it's a Western thematic. You shoot uh, enemies, and yeah. uh, if you think, uh, and I, but I mean, my point is, I don't think it started with much higher. Uh, I think our first test it was something around it. Usually, you don't. Uh, it's rare that first test and you reach the KPI. So uh, that I mentioned, like two thousand seconds play time and. Uh, and uh, 20% uh, or 30% retention, unless, unless you, I mean, unless it's a hybrid casual, unless you planned it like it, if it's a hybrid casual, usually you, you landed around this metric yeah, that you mentioned. Perfect. Yeah. And you can go and check out that game. That's now in the Homer Games account, uh, the Wild West game. It's more like a nerf mechanic where you got to sort of go around the corner and like peek out and shoot. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth it. So what would we do? I would put that on Homer Lab and we can test it for you. And we can take a look, and uh, I would do that, Burrett. So get your questions in, or we're going to start wrapping it up today. Oleg, thanks so much for doing the uh, presentation for us. It's really, um, we want to mix it up again. And like I said, if you did submit your videos, we will get back to doing some of those. But I wanted to mix it up because we want to make sure we're providing tons of value to you. And this way we can um, keep this fresh. And honestly, I was saying to Olek just before, I always learn stuff when Olek comes and does all this and it makes it more interesting for me, totally selfishly. So um, really um, gives it a lot of, we hope you've got something out of this today and you're, you're trying to think about things a little bit differently um, and give you that full rounded picture. And honestly, like I said, my takeaway mostly today is the absolutely juggernaut machine that is our creative dev department coming up with all of these creatives with the Fight for America ones were absolutely first class. And to think they didn't work is, I find it's disappointing, but it just goes to show that they don't always work. And the best plans that you can think of, sometimes they just don't hit the mark. And it's, uh, I think it's a bit sad, but that's part, that's part of where we were up to, right? Um, any more questions before we start to wrap up today? As Jilly says, do hit that like button. That shows us that um, you want to see more of these. Well, we will come on next month. But if that is everybody, you've got a few seconds here, and then we're going to call it, because it is a beautiful Friday afternoon. And we all want to uh, go and drink that beer. So Ria has come on and saved us from the beer. Um, what is a good game playtime for day seven and how to increase playtime in hyper casual well, i'll let you take that one Oleg. i think uh, i mean i kind of think that uh, the person meant good game retention for day seven I, yeah, otherwise i don't see the uh otherwise the question like it's weird uh, the no, play time for day seven. Time. i mean I think, yeah the day seven retention i would say I would say that ten uh, percent classic uh, for 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 hyper casual. It could be a bit lower, but then depends on on your game CPA. But uh, usually, the for hyper casual, we I mean we would want the uh, LTV to mature, but maybe I mean we understand that uh, day seven might be hard to reach, so a bit uh, maybe compromisable on day seven. Usually, the the usual benchmark is ten percent. If you have that, you are you are good. You're in honey. 
Uh, and uh, how to increase play time depends on the genre, but usually uh, you should add features that make your game more interesting. Uh, not not the meta, not the the shop, not the the cosmetic stuff, but exactly the features. You know the way of player interact with your game. Uh, in the runner, I mean, uh, for instance, the the three step uh, innovation of Rolic where they added the the simulation part inside the runner. You know where you c clean the 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 ground do, do stuff like that it was a small innovation it's a feature and uh allowed them to scale a few games like that yeah and, uh, i'm sure it increased the playtime yeah. yeah that's right it's like that's more of a game design and level design stuff make your game more interesting keep the players hooked for longer like adding like like alex said uh, nothing around the shop or anything like that They'll add new skins that's not going to cut it keep the game interesting for them but yeah day day seven all around um Think about look at what your D three is for a start and see see where people are falling off at any point. Is there any particular um, thing in your stats that you're finding that there's a particular fatigue and they drop off at a particular time or a particular level? Um, look at those sort of things. Um, maybe uh, it could be the balancing and the pace of the game that's just like just gets a little bit boring after a certain amount of time. You might need to mix it up a little bit. All right, no one wants us to, to go up the pub today, so we have got Bannockers come in. Could we try and could we try an edit of the game? Not a trailer, but an edit of all the mechanics of the game. With the rise of hybrid, it's hard to do justice in a 30 second clip. Yeah, you could try, yeah. We use so many uh, games where the edit works, but just do not uh, go too much crazy on it. Uh, sometimes I think we came in with some games which, you know, is like almost a series of uh, different, uh, uh, like, you know, two seconds cut, 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 which is uh, kind of annoying. It's uh, not uh, interesting to watch. And I think uh, it's one of the feedbacks I think I heard from, uh, from TikTok. Uh, from from people working in TikTok is that on their platform, for instance, the creative should be fun to watch, and uh, that's how they get viral. That's how they they uh, people the game the game gets viral on TikTok. And I think it's interesting point that uh, uh, interesting to watch, fun to play. It's uh, the the core of how the hyper casual and the same hybrid should look like. And then if cuts help you achieve it, uh, sure you can do it. Yeah, I think the only thing I'd add to that is like. If you've got, you, you should try and identify the 10 best bits of your game and then take that sit, uh, take that 10 of the best bits and then cut that in half and then you've got five of the top best, best bits of what you've built already and that's your five videos to test. I don't think you need to edit them together. Um, be really brutal. Identify the 10 best bits, then cut it in half and that's your, that's your suite to test on. If you've got more than... If you haven't got more than 10, then your game's probably a little bit boring. Um, that's the truth of it. So and I that, wouldn't worry about editing. I don't know. What do you think, Ole? But I think uh, what I would say is that the scenario for hybrid casual is quite important. For instance, for Aquarium Land, uh, we tested all, every part of the game. And the part that worked best is when on the first two, three seconds, the, the stickman, he does a backflip and he jumps into water. And it was, uh, you know, the, really the best uh, scenario. The people that, the, like, you know, the first three seconds, they liked uh, the guy uh, doing backflip jump in the water. And we found that uh, during our tests in the soft launch, but before, and then it cuts, and then uh, there is the other gameplay. But uh, usually, if your theme is interesting for hybrid casual, if your mechanic is interesting, which was uh, um, uh, chase, aquarium, uh, aquarium men <laughs> chasing the, the fish, uh, it had already a low CPI, and then we just managed to get it a bit lower by finding the part that people they like to jump into, watch uh, Stickman jump into a water on the first second. Yeah. So usually the stuff that uh, we will find, uh, and uh, if you you know, and uh, on the testing stage, you you by testing like uh, six different elements of the game, like Kevin said, you will just be able to prove okay, the theme is interesting, mechanic is interesting. Maybe you won't have your best creative. Uh, that we will scale with, but uh, you will have a proof that uh, the game could work. Yeah, I think that's really interesting as well, because I love it. This is why we love having these conversations, because you're right. And I think I think you're right to pull me up on that, because it, typically I still stand by what I said, but that doesn't mean you 
can't. It's such a such a weird thing. I kind of can't articulate what I mean. I think you should try it, but you what you want to definitely avoid, I think, is a way of putting it. Is what Alex said. Don't do these two second cuts that just fry your brain, where you can't really see what's what's happening. Don't go op on the cuts. I would try and keep it pure, but yeah, sure. I think that's one one to try. Great question there, Banika. Thanks for that. Atahan says, do you think it's important that a game can be played well on most phones or that the best graphic quality and effects are more important? So do we want a game that can play on more devices or should we go all out and build super fancy graphics? You want a game that would be played on uh, most devices and... Uh... That's uh, sometimes uh, in a hybrid casual, for instance, we want, okay, do we add this uh, cool effect that uh, will make the game play better on Android 13, but uh, it will be bad on uh, on uh, Android uh, 0.6. Uh, we usually make the choice in towards uh, choosing something that will uh, uh, be played on both. So it's still, uh, you know, we still want to reach as many people as possible and we still want to, to scale our game in, in India and all other countries. So we would do that. I mean, technically, there is a possibility to launch different campaigns or different stuff uh, uh, targeting different devices. And even inside your game, there is a way to, you know, uh, uh, something that uh, Midcore and like very, very uh, big games are doing. They can, uh, you know, put a different setting of the game according to your device. But uh, for now, put like that, I would say choose the something that would run on all devices. Yeah, yeah and I think um, it's, it's a really good question and an interesting one. And you're right, there are certain, uh, depending on how well the game's doing, you can identify the, the system of the device and serve up different sort of mm -hmm. builds and stuff, as, so to speak. But yeah, try and go for... for as, performance will be an issue so if you you, you really want to sort of downplay it to start with and of course if you do come and publish with us we have the we have the teams here to help with the optimization and everything to have that try and balance that up between performance and you know and looking awesome um thank you Rox. um looking forward to the next one Nice one. We will be here next month. Don't you worry. Can you talk a bit about ad creative's aspect ratio, says Saria. Now, we do have all the things you need to know for testing within Homer Academy. So definitely check out that. Um, Oleg, have you got, I mean. But you just basically, it depends on the network. What you want is that your creative is like put, takes the whole space of your phone. So you don't want uh, some weird, you know, cuts, uh, black, uh, black spaces or, or whatever just uh you know when people scroll on facebook it should take the whole space of the feed. yeah that's right and for all the dimensions you can see uh within the homo academy for all the testing with us on facebook especially uh, so i hope that helps there thank you have a making weekend great fun kpis awesome <laughs> okay well everyone's saying goodbye to us here so that's that's kind of cool how good is an idea meta game how good is an idea meta game to interwoven with core gameplay. Example: An example would be if we build a room and play, and play core game in this room. It's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, you would want people to, you know, usually when you just take, a, if you have a runner, for instance, or okay, you have a yeah. game and you you put a meta which is like completely separated, and I'll just. Uh, something completely unrelated, it usually doesn't work that well because people are not interested in it. Uh, unless, you know, it's uh, like mid-core projects, what they're doing, they're putting, uh, you know, the, the meta, which they know has a very good retention, for instance, like, you know, you you can put match three and then a big, big, big city building meta, uh, which is a bit like disseparated, right? But not related to not related things, but we just know that they both uh, have a very good, like, good uh, play time and uh, retention itself. But uh, for hyper casual hybrid, you would want something related. Yeah. If uh, you, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking of Z raft. If you, if you are on your raft, uh, killing zombies, the meta is building it and making it better. That's like, uh, you know, two very interesting interwoven uh, things. Yeah. I think it's pretty much crucial. Actually, I'll go one further and say it must be, uh, it must be tied in. Cause what we've seen in the past where like, just like Alex said, you've got some runner 
then all of a sudden you've got some random game plugged into it and it looks it feels weird and it has this this separate sort of vibe about it and players can pick up on it you'll pick up on it we I, I remember i won't name any names but it had this runner and you got to the end and all of a sudden you started building statues in a museum and it was it, yeah. just like the most random thing ever um but if the I games like are uh, say there were a few uh, I'd arcades. There were a few runners that had I'd arcades in the, at the level end. R Rolik tried few, Voodoo tried few, and it did work. People churned. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it's too random. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and you can do all sorts of weird and wacky stuff in your games, but most of all, they need to make sense on a basic level. Um, but as, as Olek mentioned, if the, the bigger games, the match freeze and the sort of bubble shooters can get away with it a little bit, um, but they are, they tend to do a really good job of somehow shoehorning it in to make it not feel weird. Um, I think it's a very expensive job to do that and do that well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would think of, think of the natural progression of whatever your game is and what you could add on to it. So like if you're building a raft, don't have you know, a, some sort of meta aspect where you've got robots fighting aliens, right? Just, it just, it doesn't make any sense. All right, that is going to go and wrap it up for us today because we are just about on time. Oleg, thanks so much for that. Um, I know you were talking a little bit about um, next month's show and we're going to do something similar to this, uh, but we haven't forgotten about your videos and I may well um, post them up on the Discord throughout the month, I think. Um but is there anything you want to close off with, Oleg, today with with anything? Or are we good to go? Um, is there one final thought about fake creatives, one golden nugget you can leave us with um, about if anyone was thinking about using sort of a fake creative in their, in their testing? I think, uh, I think it's a high risk, high reward. You can really uh, get something outstanding out of it. But... Uh, it's almost like doing a new game, you know, you need to copy your Unity project and uh, do completely different settings, nah, nah, nah. maybe uh, using so it can take a lot of time, but it can be uh, it can be very beneficial for your game. So um, it's like a VC business, <laughs> do bets if you want, but uh, not too much because uh, uh, maybe it's just bad. I mean, maybe even if they create if your project won't work, too, like quite a lot of risk uh, associated to it. Perfect. All right. With all that said and done, that's going to go and wrap it up for us. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you want to see more of this next month, we will be returning. But hit that like button and that lets us know that you enjoyed the show. We will be back next week for more Homer Hangout. So come and join us then. Do subscribe to the channel so you get notified. But with all that said and done, Oleg, thank you, sir. We will see you next time around and uh, we'll see everybody else really soon. See you later, everybody. Thanks for joining with us. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.